Oh, uh, hey guys, welcome to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy. I love this ad that always appears on my on my, my channel here. Hey, one question for that guy. Every time you see him, send him a message saying, hey, can we see you sing? And uh, send him another message to say, and then can we also see your students sing? Uh, really like to see that. Anyway, um, I uh, am gonna do today 12 game-changing tips for you guys. And I think you're gonna really like this. now. I want to uh, give a couple shout outs first to my notification squad. Hey, you guys, uh, it's awesome to see you and thank you for, uh, for joining from all around the world. Where are we coming from today, guys? Uh, South Africa, we got North Dakota. Isn't that kind of like South Africa? <laughs> we got Denmark, we've got Bob in Oregon. Hey, I know who that guy is. We've got uh, Krosto from India. Woo, got them all over the place. Uh, Croatia from Germany. Uh, where else are we coming from, guys? Uh, jealous other coaches. Yes, <laughs> that's true, Jason. Thanks, man. Uh, let's see here. Um, I think that's what, that's about it right now. So I just want to say we're, we're doing this every uh, Thursday and Saturday, as you guys know, from 9 a.m. to whenever. It uh, feels like it's good to you know sign off. Usually about an hour, sometimes less, sometimes a little more. And we've got some really great subjects coming up, guys. Today, as you know, it's 12 game-changing tips uh, for your voice, so um, for great singing, actually. And I want to I want to differentiate 12 tips from 12 in-depth things to do for your voice. We're gonna get to that in another uh, another session. These are quick tips, people like quick tips, so I'm gonna give it to you. But I wanna, um, I wanna say a couple things. Now, the very first thing, and I'm just gonna dive right in, so I hope you guys that are joining, you know, you're already on and we're good to go. But the very first thing is tip number one, okay? Really important. Make sure you know that you get your tips from someone you can trust. So the first tip is know where you're getting your tips. And here's what I mean. Just because someone raises their hand and claims to be a vocal coach or does some scale on, on whatever, or sings some note, the very first thing is tip number one, know where you get your tips from and make certain that that vocal coach can sing and sing well, sing and sing well and has demonstrations up the wazoo on our channel so you can really determine that what they're trying to tell you is legit. It's a really important thing, guys. If there's a, if there's a, of all these tips I'm giving you, I should have probably saved that one for last, but it sort of is the filter by which we see all the other tips and what, what gives credibility to the tips. So again, let's do this again. The tip number one is get your tips from someone that sings and sings well proves it on their channel and have students that sing and sing well to prove what they're telling you is legit. It's the only way you can um, ferret out this information and authenticate it, okay? So please make that your very first tip. No matter what ad comes on the screen, no matter what vocal coach bashes another vocal coach claiming, well, we do nay, 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 therefore it's bright, therefore, where they leave out half the information or don't even know about the rest of the story and so they're trying to you know, tear down other people and show them how awesome they are, it's a simple question. Just ask them, awesome, can you sing something for me to demonstrate that? I wanna hear you sing and I wanna hear your students singing. You want me to buy into your advice, so just show me. Again, it's the only discipline that I know of or vocal coaches that just go wah, 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 and mouth how to sing rather than teaching you how to sing. You wouldn't go to a guitar player that didn't know how to play guitar and just told you how to do it and expected you to learn from some things they wrote out or just telling you something from a book. You wouldn't go to a baseball coach you wouldn't go to learn how to be a doctor. You wouldn't go to learn in any other discipline. You would not learn something from someone else that didn't already have and prove that they could do it to show you. Now I wanna bring up a quick point on this and why this is important. There's a really well-known vocal coach and I'm, I'm saying this because it's a way to help you guys discern information, okay? And the vocal coach said, well, Ken, that's just not true. In professional uh, uh, athlete, athletics, so in, in pro, uh, pro sports, the coaches don't necessarily play themselves or have played themselves, and yet they coach the greatest teams in the world. I'm so glad you asked and brought up that question. That is not true, and let me tell you why. Those coaches 
take talent that is already at the highest level and they manage talent strategically. They don't teach anybody how to throw a ball, kick a ball, swim, surf, you know, whatever, mountain climb. They don't teach any of that. They take people that have already had the trainers, the vocal coaches, the trainers that have done this themselves to get them to perform at the highest level. Then they cherry pick that talent. Oh, he's a good forward. Oh, he's a good center midfielder. Oh, he's a good goalie. And they manage talent and watch that talent and strategically place it on a field and make suggestions to players. So don't be deceived by that kind of uh, smoke and mirrors because these guys will say anything in order to keep your attention. It's just a simple, and I know I'm, I know I'm, I'm ranting on this, but the proof is in the singing. Ask them if they sing, please demonstrate it in multiple styles. See if you like their voice. If you do awesome, they might be your person. And do they display other students singing and singing well and preferably and hopefully in a style that you want to learn? Very important. All right, let's continue on. So that was tip number one. Tip number two, a lot of people want to rely on tinctures and elixirs. What is a tincture and elixir? You know, uh, something, a, a throat coat, you know, something that soothes the throat or lozenges or you know, a drink of sorts or whatever, honey and, and lemon and tea and all these different things. Well, the first thing is guys, is that most elixirs and tinctures and lozenges contain glycerin and glycerin is, is, is it might initially throw up the coat and feel good for a dry throat or if it's dry out or, or you, you feel kind of overworked or you haven't slept well or something. So you feel real dry. They help initially get, take away that feeling. But what ends up happening is, is it ends up uh, coating the throat and the trachea with mucus because sugar contributes to turning into mucus and promotes inflammation. So think about this guys for your momentary, oh, that feels better on my throat. But when it comes game time or time to perform, all of a sudden you're finding yourself hacking and spitting up the glycerin to clear off the vocal folds and you feel you're like, Ugh. Man, I've got all this gack in my throat because these things contain glycerin. Now there are a few lozenges out there that don't. One of them is Thebes by Young Living. It's a very expensive little packet. It's like 25 bucks. You don't have to get that. I happen to like them a lot because they work really well. I don't use them all the time. I just use filtered room temperature water. That's it. And lots of it. Stay hydrated. Continue to stay hydrated. That is the best thing you can do for your voice. Even if you kind of wake up and go, oh my gosh, I'm, just, you know, I'm kind of dry. I got to do something. Do that. Don't do the honey. I know it sounds crazy. People can say, wait a minute. Everyone says do honey. No, it's a sugar and it, it, it leaves glycerin or it leaves a, 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 a film on your throat, on your folds, not literally directly on the folds, but it goes down to the trachea and, the, and then your body starts to um, assimilate the, the sugars, which turns into inflammation over time. So that's a, that's a, a really helpful thing here. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, when, when you're, uh, you know, taking like a lozenge or something, it's not bad to have a throat lozenge. Just get one that's sugar free if you can and use one with like mentholatum or, you know, some other thing like that. That'll really help you a lot. By the way, slippery elm is okay. So I know throat coat has slippery elm in it. For example, slippery elm is okay. That happens to be an herb that you can use. Um, and, and a lozenge that has that in it, but try to get one without sugar. Okay. Uh, next thing is, um, you can also do, if you're going to do a tea, you could do the tea with some ginger in it. Try not to use lemon because it's acidic and actually the acid also can wreak havoc. Don't do that. That's good for a sore throat for healing a sore throat as is gargling salt and other things like that. That's, that's good for a sore throat, but not good for, uh, for, um, keeping moisture in the vocal folds and keeping the throat moist. So don't do an acid, anything acidic. So tea with ginger is great. I could recommend that green tea, especially. And even though it has caffeine and we're going to talk about that in a minute, it's such a mellow, um, release of caffeine into the body. It's not like drinking coffee or a Coke or something really heavy in caffeine. So tip number three is diet dies diet. Come on. I want you to really think about this. Please don't think that if you put sludge in your engine that you're going to get high performance, it just doesn't work that way. So really make yourself, Number one, make yourself eat before a performance. 
Now, wait a minute, Ken, you said don't eat before performance. No, I didn't say that. I said don't eat up to an hour before your performance. But what happens on show day and the closer you get to show time is your adrenaline kicks in and your body doesn't feel like it wants to eat. So you go, oh, no, I'm not hungry at all, man. No, I don't need it. Oh, forget it. No, no, no. But you do need to eat and you need to eat healthy things. And I'm going to tell you what those are and I'm going to tell you things not to eat. But if you don't eat, then the body can't replenish the things and particularly the moisture and, and, and the um, hydration in the body. So you really want to do things that keep the body well hydrated and good clean energy, things that contain um, you know, a response that gives the body good clean energy. So eat no matter what, even if you don't feel like it, eat up to an hour before performance. Try not to make it within that hour window because then you start burping and regurgitating in the stomach and gurgling and acid reflux and all kinds of crap can come up um, related to singing or related to eating, excuse me, uh, when you sing. So um, make sure it's up to an hour, but not like four hours before, like a couple hours before, hour and a half, uh, two hours, hour and a half is a really good uh, rule of thumb for eating before singing. So, um, and, I, and by the way, um, when, when we get have adrenaline, this is really, really important guys, check this out. When we don't eat, the body works on adrenaline, but adrenaline is a stress response. It's a fight or flight stress response through the body. So it shuts the body down. So while your mouth might feel wiry and almost like you've drunk caffeine because you're all excited, what it's doing is it's actually shrinking uh, uh, your muscle structure and you know closing the body in and creating inflammation throughout the body. That's the last thing you want. You want to do things that chill you out and mellow you out and keep you just even and balanced. You don't want to live on adrenaline. So please, like I said, eat and eat something healthy. So. Um, what we do, two things I'm going to get to foods. The first thing is an, uh, avoid inflammatory foods. So let's talk about that. Dairy, dairy creates mucus. Dairy is hard to digest. Don't be eating a big bunch of pizza or cheese related things or milk related things or dairy related things um, because it not only uh, promotes mucus, but it also um, is going to create and cause inflammation throughout the body sugars, which we just mentioned. So pretty much anything, especially refined processed sugars, anything like that, just stay away from it. Cookies, crackers, you know, confection, sweets, whatever, stay away from that. Even white breads and a lot of breads that turn into residual or turn into sugar. Um, heavy red meats are heavy inflammatory. Any hydrogenated food, and you guys know what that is. And if you don't, I don't want to take the time to explain it here. You know what it is. Hydrogenated crap, French fries and and, and you know, uh, snacky foods that are, have a, a shelf life of, of 2026 on the label, right? Hydrogenated foods, very, very, very bad for you when it comes to inflammation and just putting sludge in your veins. Um, the next thing is too, I know you're not gonna like this, but do your best to avoid alcohol. It's just dries you out, weirds you out, and uh, really, really, really also creates a lot of inflammation throughout the body. So does caffeine. There are a few exceptions to that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But caffeine, don't be drinking coffee or, or things that contain a lot of caffeine in it because that too is going to shut down the body and create inflammation. Smoking is horrible. Guys, if you smoke, try not to do it on show day at the very least or as much as, minimize that as much as you can or cut it out altogether because it'll turn your cords into leather and they'll have no resiliency at all to them, no flexibility, no stretch in them. Um, good anti-inflammatory foods you can eat that are anti-inflammatory, not just not, not inflammatory, but anti work against that work for promoting good, uh, you know, re reducing inflammation, uh, berries, almost any kind of berry, right? Get an SIE, uh, you, know, you guys have little SIE sticks. I don't know if you've seen them like a bowl of SIE that's really good to, good to have. And it also contains guarana. So it has a kind of an energy booster, natural energy booster in it that's pure and you, it's okay to eat. It's okay to have. Um, fatty fish, good fatty fish. What can I hate fish? All right, but I have to name it. So a good fatty fish is really healthy. Avocados are awesome. They contain good fats and they're anti-inflammatory. All right, veggie lovers out there, broccoli. Yes, broccoli. You're not going to throw broccoli at me, are you? No, really, it's good. Peppers, believe it or not, all kinds of different peppers. Now for some people, peppers, um, you know, uh, her, uh, agitate their stomach and create an acid reflux. So if you've got acid reflux, avoid the peppers. But if you don't and you can eat them, those are great. Tomatoes are great. Now there used to be that because tomatoes um, are actually a fruit, 
people think of them as a vegetable. Um, it's, it's interesting because while they are acidic and they contain good natural sugars, it's a really good anti-inflammatory and it's good for energy and for balancing out the pH in the stomach. So it's not about, you know, uh, just avoid anything that's high acidic. And it's about a good balance. We need acid in the stomach to digest food. So it, taking a, a, you know, anti-acid uh, pill, like, you know, a Tums or something is really awful for you. It's one of the worst things that over the counter medicine has done for our digestive tract. And so tomatoes are great. Mushrooms are great. And I don't mean magic mushrooms. I mean regular mushrooms. Um, those are really good for you. You know, so mushrooms are great. Um, grapes and cherries and things like that are good. Olive oil is awesome. Cold pressed virgin olive oil. Pour it over some vegetables, pour it over, you know, and, and you can even get, I, I wouldn't normally say this because you shouldn't eat wheat, you know, big thick wheat, because if it really needs to be a, a non-NGO, um, uh, uh, NGO, that's, that's a non-governmental organization. Yes, uh, uh, GMO, NGO, GMO, that's what I meant to say. I've been reading too much of my conspiracy theory stuff, non-governmental organizations. Anyway, uh, GMO products um, are really, really bad because they don't digest and they just sit and rot in the gut and create leaky gut and all kinds of horrible things. So if you do want to eat a piece of toast and put some olive oil on it with a little bit of salt or something and some um, garlic, actually that's good too. Um, it's okay to do that if it's, if it's a whole grain, non-GMO product. Um, here's where the caffeine comes in. Dark chocolate is actually really good to eat for anti as an anti-inflammatory. And I know that kind of sounds like it goes against the grain of what I just said. Just get one with a high cacao factor. So try to get it at least 72% cacao. Try not to get dark chocolate that's filled with sugar because we love our chocolates, our milk chocolates, just gobs of sugar. Get one that's 72, 78, even 80, 81, 82. I love dark chocolate and I eat the 78 to 82 percentile range. Some people might not like it because it's a little on the bitter side. Get a good one because they can get funky. Valrona is great. And actually, um, Choco Love is a really great brand and it's reasonably priced. You can actually get it at, um, what's that order in place called? I'll think of it in a minute. Um, anyway, Vitacost. You can get it from Vitacost, really cheap and they're great chocolate bars. Um, so uh, turmeric is also excellent, excellent, excellent. Turmeric pills. If you guys wanna get on like a regimen of something that's gonna keep your inflammatory down, turmeric pills, just take one a day. You know, with, on an empty stomach or not on an empty stomach. You don't even taste it. Careful if you open it up or if you use the liquid stuff uh, because it will stain everything. I mean, it, if you get it on, it's like mustard. It's done. Be the clo piece of clothing, whatever it is. So use uh, turmeric is awesome. Now, we just talked about number four. I said it with the uh, talking about tinctures, but I want to reiterate it. Tip number four is avoid clearing your throat. Now, when we get a nervous response, a lot of times, and or if we have post-nasal drip, or you know, we've eaten some crap we shouldn't have eaten, so it's not digesting correctly, um, we have a tendency to have mucus that, that builds in the, in the throat, down into the trachea, the glottis, and when we're not. And, and so, um, I meant to say esophagus, not glottis, excuse me. Um, and, and what happens is, is that we go, ah, 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 and we're constantly spitting. That scrapes the cords with air, and really exacerbates them and dries them out. So we really wanna completely avoid that because that also, once we do that, that starts this, uh, this reverberation effect and the snowball effect of inflammation. So the goal again here is to just do really healthy, clean things to keep your body functioning in a real great um, thing. Avoid, and this is in the same thing on four, avoid talking too much during the show. So scraping your throat and talking too much. It should have probably been its own point, but I'm giving you maybe 12 and <laughs> tips. Um, because it, if you don't know how to talk correctly, and if you talk a lot, um, it will absolutely fatigue the voice. So come show time, and you know, you do interviews, or you're doing a radio thing, or you're doing a sound check thing. Even in sound check, for you musicians out there, so do you wanna warm, warm up your song a couple times if you're doing a single performance? Be really careful. Don't. I, I can't tell you how many times bands go out to impress the three hot chick groupies in the front during sound check, and their sound checks are better than their performance because they blew their voice out trying to impress four people rather than 400 or 4,000. So really, minimize the talking and watch, you know, how, how be judicious about how you warm up your voice before performance. Number five, this is really important because everyone has done this. 
and you're going to say, I'm so guilty of this. Don't try foreign things in a panic on show day because you're feeling a little off. Okay. Go with what you know and what you've practiced. How many times have you started to panic thinking, Oh, my voice is gone. I don't have that note. I don't this, I'm, I'm not, I don't, my voice is starting. Uh, I don't know what to do. And so a friend will say, Hey man, you should do, you know, do a shot of Jack Daniels, put some lemon and some water, chug it down and then, you know, do three Hail Marys, you know, whatever. And remember if these guys were that awesome, they would already be singing too and doing a great job. So don't take recommendation recommendations from anybody. Even if it's something that may help you, it may not help you in the way that you're doing it or applying it and you're doing it in a panic. So avoid that. Stick with a regimen that you've been doing in a consistent regimen and be okay with that because you will get to live to fight another day. Even if this day wasn't your best or whatever, if you do the regimen and you have the confidence that you can depend on the regimen, that is going to be far more than some pill or some guy walking up with a jacket going, Hey, try one of these drugs right here. You know, here's something for you. There's a little pill. Try that. Right. Um, in fact, ironically, it's kind of humorous. The song comfortably numb was written because he took a pill at a doctor's suggestion for his back. And he said it was enough to feel like he was knocked out a freaking elephant. So even at that level from a medical doctor, even at that level, he should have stuck with, stayed with what he knew instead of taking a pill and then feeling comfortable. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody in there? <laughs> Just knock if you can hear me. Ah, is there anybody home? <laughs> turn back, turn back, turn back. So don't do it anyway. All right. Um, next thing is take, I know I've said this before. Number six, take a long, hot shower about an hour and a half to two hours before showtime and before warming up. Okay. This is genius and sleep with a humidifier if you can. Okay. Good essential oils are good to put in it. Like eucalyptus, tea tree oil, mentholatum, you know, some other stuff like that, but take a nice long steamy hot shower and you're going to be blown away at how it opens up the sinus cavities, how it puts resiliency and moisture and flexibility in the vocal folds, how it reduces inflammation, how it just makes your body. That's why the old saying, you know, well, I sound so much better in the shower. You might, you might. Yeah, because it loosens up the folds and you have a relaxation response for the body. It's just genius. Now, when you do it, something that's really cool is get yourself, go on to a, a reputable, um, uh, essential oil site online or a store and get some essential oils, get either tea tree, eucalyptus, something like breathe easy, but something with like a mentholatum in it. Uh, maybe a spearmint or peppermint. Be a little careful with peppermint because it's really strong. And just after your shower, put a little bit right here under the nose and around the nostrils. Don't go inside just right here. And then right in here, just rub it on it and waft in the fumes of that. And you're going to go, Whoa, I am just so cleared out. This feels so good. And then you can start up your warm up process. That's what I would do. That's what I'd recommend. Breathing. This is a big deal. Learning how to breathe for anxiety. This isn't the kind of breathing we're talking about when we sing. Now what I'm about to tell you this specific kind of breathing, and this was brought to my attention by one of my students actually he reminded me of it and I should have put this in my course, but there's two different kinds of breathing in there already. So I, I wanted to make sure that, that, that I could keep this separate because this is breathing for anxiety. This kind of breathing is done in the military and predominantly in within the Navy SEALs or, or high, high stress um, situations. Um, first thing is taking deep breaths uh, in the frontal lobe is when you kind of panic when you take deep breaths or you're, I'm not deep breaths, when you panic breathe is a frontal lobe shutdown. It takes your frontal lobe in the brain and it starts the shutdown process of panic and anxiety and invokes the fight or flight response at the end of the food chain of a fight or flight response. It goes into shutdown mode. So you don't just have fight or flight, fight or flight actually takes you down a path and that path is complete shutdown, like all systems off. Okay. So when a person is nervous or scared or depressed or full of fear, the frontal lobe shuts down. What is triggered is the fight and flight response 
It's fight and flight, by the way. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but also freezes that response simultaneously. Blood is taken from your frontal lobe, your immune system, and your digestive system and sent to your muscles. And you've probably seen this where your muscles are like, they're just like, you know, really tense and tight. And all of a sudden you just start to feel this, this like achy kind of adrenal, oh, you know, really uh, spent sort of feeling. Now, many of you have probably experienced this where let's say you're driving, some guy cuts you off and you almost get in an accident and you go into like an immediate fight or flight response Adre uh, the adrenal glands flood the body with the hormone of uh, adrenal gland hormone or adrenal hormone adrenaline and then all of a sudden after the fact you just feel absolutely wiped out tired you're like whoa oh my gosh you know because you have that sickening sort of feeling from this exact response that happens to get you there quicker but this gets you there and does it, it does some damage as far as the relaxation response and the ability to take control of, of your adrenal uh, situation so blood's taken from your frontal lobe and it's, it's, it siphons it away from your immune system, your digestive system, sent to your muscles. And because you're in the fight or flight or freeze response mode, all your body is ready for is to fight, run, and then a real bad freeze at the end. The way to keep the blood in the frontal lobe is by breathing, okay? So it's by a very deliberate kind of breathing. Inhale for four seconds. Let's do this together. We're gonna inhale for four seconds. We're gonna exhale for four seconds. So we're gonna go, through the nose, by the way. Exhale, sit. Inhale, four. Exhale, six. Okay, now if you notice, the inhalation is a little quicker than the exhalation by two seconds. So you have to compensate for taking in a nice deep breath and you're gonna do this consistently, cons with consistency and consistently and you're gonna notice that the body starts to go into a relaxation response. It starts to calm down. You start to chill. Even if you're all panicked. Let's say you have panic attacks, right? This is also excellent for that. Now, you have to give yourself some respite, a break in between. So you could do this about six, seven, eight times and then stop. Wait about a minute, 60 seconds, then go back and do it again. And then wait about another minute or two minutes. Don't hyperventilate, do this slowly, be careful, do it, you know, follow the, the, the time signature of it, four seconds in, six seconds out. And you're gonna notice, you're gonna start to chill out. You're gonna go, wow, this is crazy, this works really good. Well, tell you what, if it works for the military in a really high tense situation, it'll work for you, okay? So, there is that. Then, uh, the next thing is uh, running in place. I, sh I, I should have made this a, sec a separate tip but I'm putting it in the, the breathing response because it's kind of in the same camp. And here's what you do. You can do jumping jacks. You can ride it, walk a treadmill. You can ride a bike. You can run outside and, and scream or sing your song. But what happens is, is that we almost need to be somewhat anaerobic. What does that word means? It means to perform in the absence of oxygen. Okay. So, well, Ken, you can't perform in the absence of oxygen. Well, actually you can to a certain degree. That's why, um, divers are able to go down and deep dive. You know, they're able to hold their breath. There's a certain amount of oxygen, but they're able to conserve that oxygen in crazy depths and come back up. Well, it's also true that if you accumulate a certain amount of oxygen without hyperventilating and accruing too much oxygen in the blood, you get accustomed to the body get, that gets trained and accustomed to being okay with this kind of oxygen response. So you can do jumping jacks and sing your song. You can run in place and sing your song so that your, your uh, breathing response is at a high rate, your heart is at a high rate, your, your heart is pumping a lot of oxygen through the body, but you don't feel like you're gonna pass out and the body becomes accustomed to being able to perform with this much physicality to it so that when you're standing there and your heart is beating through your throat, it's almost the same kind of thing, even though it's a, an adrenal response in that instance, that's when you work in your breathing that we just talked about, you then have conditioned your body in such a way to be okay at that level and perform at that level. Now this happens all the time in the professional athlete world. And let me use, I've used this example before. I want to use it again in a different context. We've talked about vocal coaches saying that you're, you should never uh, experience any stress when you sing. So tired of hearing that. I still hear people parrot this bull crap. 
when Lionel Messi, the great number five in Barcelona, is going to goal and he's going to go strike, is his body in, 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 a, in, in distress? Is he stressed? Well, distress is a pretty strong word to use, but I'm going to use it here to, to make a point. His body is stressed beyond belief. I mean beyond belief. But he's been able to manage away that stress by this technique, by understanding these concepts. So he can receive a ball, run like there's no tomorrow. If he doesn't have a shot, he lays it off to someone else and runs like there's no tomorrow to go to space, collects a ball, dribbles through three guys, scores or not, and then has to make it back to the half line to wait to do this all over again. And oftentimes for 90 minutes. So with this kind of training, understanding how this works, you can condition your body to do what it is you're about to do in ways. And this may not be a quick tip per se, but I did want to add it to the breathing tip because it deserves to be worked in together um, in concert with each other. So that's very, very important. Number nine, record yourself. I know I've said this before, but it's, it's worthy. Get your phone out, record yourself and listen to yourself. And people say, is that really how I sound? Ooh, do I really sound like that? Unfortunately, yes, you do. But the good news is, is that you also have a first immediate response where you can listen to something and work on correcting it, right? Now, I know these aren't high technical singing tips. We're gonna get that in another session. These are quick tips, that's what this is about. So I'm just trying to give you quick tip things to do. So record yourself and listen back and then see, well, what do I like about this? What do I not like about this? How can I change this, right? And obviously I have a singing course. It's called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else and I cover how to get you to all these places in the course. So it'll require some training. It goes beyond the 12 tips that we're talking about right here and now. The next subject, starting at number 10, is the psychology of singing. And there is a lot to this. The first thing is, I'm gonna just use steal, blatantly, unapologetically steal a Nike slogan. Just do it. Just do it. Don't wait to be perfect. Get out there and just do it. Don't wait till you get better, till you think someone's gonna help you. Da, 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 da. In Nike's own term words, get out there and just do it. Don't wait to be perfect. No one's perfect, right? So the more you do this and the more you do this in front of people, it's kind of interesting because um, there was this guy named Barney. When I was a kid, as you guys may have seen, you know, how did I become Tim, Ken Tamplin? I didn't have a dad. My dad was a total loser. Uh, didn't treat our, my family that well, as many of you have experienced, I'm sure. Um, but there was this old guy named Barney. He's, he's really sweet. And once in a great mood, he'd take me over and he knew that we didn't have a lot of money, so he'd buy me a meal, and we'd go to Carl's Jr., and he'd buy me a, a hamburger or something. You know, it was really sweet. And he said two things to me that always stuck in my life. The first thing he said to me is, whenever you come up to some stairs, always run up them like they're nothing. And if you do that all your life, you'll see that they'll always be nothing. But if you look at the stairs like, oh, I gotta go up the stairs, and you walk up them arduously, they will become harder and harder the older you get. To this very day, when I look at a pair of some stairs, it's a 56 year old man, I just go and I get up the stairs, man. I'm up them and they're easy and I stay in shape and I feel good, right? Psychologically, if I look at stairs wherever I go, I'm not intimidated by the stairs, okay? Or by the mountain I've got to climb. The second thing he said, and I know this was actually, um, I think this was a quote from I want to say it was um, uh, electric, uh, the guy that invented electricity. Uh, I'll think of his name in a minute. Anyway, um, yeah, that guy, the flying the kite with a with the <laughs> with a ring on it. Benjamin Franklin. Thank you, Ken. Uh, a Benjamin Franklin quote. But it was face your fears, and two thirds of them melt away. Get back to the psychology of singing. Face your fears. Face them head on. Just do it and two thirds of it melt, and all that's left is a third, a little mohill. That mountain that you thought was big is really a mohill, and you walk right over it. And even if you trip a little bit when you walk over it, you'll get it the next time. And it will. Be, the more you do this, the more this happens. So I don't care if this is a singing fear, a fear of heights, a fear of claustrophobia, a fear of agoraphobia, being in big spaces. I don't care what it is, if you face that fear, this is the number one thing, get your breathing technique together, 
Get your relaxation response together. Face the fear. Seriously, no matter what it is. And in this case, singing. Just do it. Just start. Don't wait to get good at it. The next thing is sing as often as you can and in front of as many people as you can. And, 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 and especially in public kind of situations. If you can do you know, public uh, appearances, circumstances, whatever. I don't care if it's you know, busking. I don't care if it's singing for your church, for your choir, to your dog, you know, your family, friends, whatever. Sing as much as you can in front of people. Even to the point of being a little annoying if you have to. So that it's like nothing when you walk out and you do it just like the running thing. When you're running and you're anaerobic, well, when you do this psychologically with your fears, the same thing happens. You're conditioning your mind to not be so freaked out over something. And it helps not just with the singing, but also with the lockdown response of the body and the fear part of it. Number 11. This is awesome. I haven't seen it yet and I can't wait to see it. But I heard there's a movie out there. And number 11 is confidence. Okay. Oh, Ken, you know, yeah, the power of positive thinking. No, no, no. Humor me for a second. I haven't seen it. I'm not sure what its rating is, so I'm not recommending something that I haven't seen, you know, putting my stamp of approval on it yet. But it's called I Feel Pretty. I want you guys to see the movie because I've seen a bunch of write-ups on it. My daughter's seen it. Some friends have seen it and told me all about it. So this chick, she's not the hottest looking chick, you know, around. I think she's overweight and maybe a little frumpy and this, that, whatever. She gets bonked in the head. And she looks at herself in the mirror and she sees herself as stunningly, awesomely gorgeous. And she's hot. In her mind, she's the same girl, the same weight issue, the same whatever issues she had before, but she got bonked in the head and all of a sudden, boom, she thinks she's hot. Now what's interesting is because the way she carries herself, you know, ain't nobody here is better than me, better than me, better than she, she's strutting around and she's hot, like, you know, to the extent that People think she's hot. I mean, how many celebrities do we know that, right? We can, we can name a few off the top of our head that just go around with big egos. And I don't mean walking around in arrogance and being arrogant, egotistical maniacs. I'm not talking about that. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking about confidence going, I got this, man. This is good. I got it. So anyway, in this movie, she's loved by everybody. And everybody's, you know, like totally wowed over this chick who's... If, if, if she had stayed the first course before she got bogged in the head, what, well, oy vey, I'm not that great. I'm not that pretty. What do you want? I'll go sit over here in the dark, you know? No, she flaunted it, flaunted it, flaunted it. And everyone loved her for it. At the end of the movie, she gets bonked back in the head and her mentality is like thinking that it's, she's changed, like something's changed about her and she realizes, no, it's the same body, it's the same person, it's the personality, it's the confidence that she walked, stepped into that gave her all the pluses that she got with the confidence factor. And then she retooled that in her mind, even though she went back to her old mentality, she went and she brought the typewriter back, the head on, you guys that are old enough to know what a typewriter, bring it back. Um, she brought it back to where she became that person and learned to live in that confidence. Okay. Very, very important. A law of attraction. Now I should have made this its own uh, tip also, but I want to bring this up as well in this context. She had fun with it. She had fun with her confidence. Okay. Have fun with your, what, what you do, what you love. Don't be so stressed out and freaked out. Do it because you love it. You just love it. Remember that old saying, you know, do something you'll love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. Well, this applies to singing guys and, and anything, any instrument, anything actually, but people will catch the spirit of your vibe. And if you're panicked and freaked out, even if you have to almost kind of pretend to condition yourself to make it look like you're having a good time, do it, do it. Even if you have to put on a show, even if you're an actor at that point, Put on a show and have a good time because people sniff out whether or not you really are. Pretend you're having fun if you have to or really truly have fun no matter what. And when you make a mistake, blow it off. Okay? When you, when you make a mistake, really, I'm seriously, think about this. I want to tell you a quick story. I, met, I said it before. I'm going to make it real fast one here. 
we, a long time ago, I was in this band, and uh, someone accidentally kicked one of the AC cables out. I had this big fancy pedal board that had all these effects that I really relied on for my whole set. And I didn't know that someone had kicked a power strip out from behind. And so I had no power to my pedal board. And I'm freaked out and I'm tearing across cables and I'm ripping them up and I'm all irritated and frustrated. Finally, I plug straight into the amp, which is what I learned later in life to do anyway. Because if you're great, you can plug into anything and just play the sucker and it's gonna be, you know, right? I just shouldn't have to depend on all these pedals. But nonetheless, years later, I'm talking to a bass player in a totally different band. And we were talking about venues that we played. And I mentioned this venue I'd played. He goes, oh yeah, man, I remember seeing some guy, some guitar player guy who like, I don't know, he just freaked out. I thought the guy was gonna have a panic attack and just start throwing his guitar or something. And that person was me. And I told him, I go, oh my gosh, that was me. And I learned that whatever situation is, laugh at it and get the audience to laugh with you. Bring them into the amusement of it. It's like, oh no, jeez. All right, guys, you're gonna have to hear me without my effects. This is gonna be interesting. And have fun with it, because if you can be lighthearted about it and get through it, you're gonna find the performance is better, the audience enjoyed themselves, you enjoyed yourself. It's a win-win for everybody. Um, so, last but not least, number 12. Number 12. Don't listen to the naysayers. Okay, remember why you want to sing in the first place. Who cares what they think? If they were that awesome, they'd be doing it too if they could. I know I've said this before, but it's really worth, worth noting. Remember why you want to sing and what your motivation for wanting to sing is in the first place. Some people, they want to be rock stars. Some people, they want to tell their story. Some people want to sing in the choir or do something in theater at their school or, 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 or sing a song to their wife or fiance or, or girlfriend or whatever, or boyfriend, right? Or they just want something that, that they love. They just want to sit in the quiet of their own thing. And, or they want something that accompanies their guitar for songwriting. And, 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 and. They're tired of depending on the singer, so they're going to do it themselves, like me. That's, that was my story, right? I wanted to tell my story and I got tired of waiting on the singer, so I learned how to sing. So remember what your motivation is, and then last but not least within the context of this, remember that everyone started somewhere. They didn't open their mouth and become Elvis Presley or Brad Delp or Mickey Thomas or you know whatever, Steve Perry. Everybody started somewhere. And you can start somewhere and take it to whatever level you're willing to put in it. Now these are quick tips. And in my singing course, How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else, we cover all the mechanics of what it takes to help make you a great singer. So we're not done yet. I'm gonna take some questions. I just wanna remind you that leaving on this about the motivation of that, next week, next Thursday at 9 a.m. is 10 tips to stay motivated. Well, Ken, I love this, but I don't have enough time. Or Ken, I love this, but I don't have a practice space. Or Ken, I love this, but, but, but. So all those things, no. We're gonna talk about 10 tips on how you can stay. <coughs> That's you, motivated, excuse me. It's a little dusty in here today. I'm gonna get someone to help me clean this place up. So with that said, um, I wanna take some, uh, some uh, questions. So thank you to my, uh, my uh, I'm gonna do a shout out to my notification squad, you guys rock. Don't forget to stay tuned in. I've got a lot of these. If you've got a request for a subject matter that you want me to cover, put that in the, in the, um, uh, the comments section so I can do this. So questions, comments. We're gonna only take a, a few because um, I, I, I've, got, I've got a lot of content coming up and I'm sure everyone's gonna get a shot at this. So anyway, uh, Jer, I'm gonna stick with the 12 game cha changing tips. So I will have another Q and A coming up. So if it's outside the 12 game changing tips of a great singing, I'll set aside those comments, those questions for later. So, uh, so here we go on the questions. Jer says, so I'm a baritone and I have a problem. Wait, hold on, let me look here. Uh, problem with mixed voice. Okay, I'm gonna get to that. That's, that's more of a heavy technical question. I will get to that because that's actually was my problem too. So I can actually really relate to that and I will discuss pulling chest, how not to pull chest, how to get into mixed voice, how to use your head voice, etc. Ahmed, hello Ken, I'm lead singer, tenor, D2, A5, uh, in a rock band and we play ACDC, Guns N' Roses, Led Zeppelin. Is it normal that I can't sing below G2 after singing high five? Okay, that's also gonna be it. Let me give you a quick answer to this though since we're here. Um, when we set our voice up high, remember I talk about little boy voice, I've said it a million times, we set 
the intonation and the tone and the registration of our voice up higher as we warm up and sing higher. So it makes it difficult for the larynx to go into a relaxed state and drop and come down and sing lower. We talked about some of the exercises, remember about massaging the larynx and, and allow it to go lower? This is exactly why we'll cover this more in the next Q&A that we've got. Um, Zamir, Zamira, I guess? Debussy. Saw your channel after I bought a package from, uh, from such vocal coach who shall remain nameless, lol. But I wish I had, would have waited to see your program first. Your program is 10 times better. Thank you and hopefully uh, at some point you'll get a chance to really see how good it is and how well it really works. Jericho, how to present squeezing throat to reach high notes. I'll cover that in the Q&A guys. I wanna keep this to the 10 tip stuff. Here we go, water, wheatgrass, okay cool. Raymond, I drink wheatgrass water, which is wheatgrass powder mixed with water almost every day. It's not good for your voice, but it can be good for your body. But remember that wheatgrass is a detox. That's why we drink it. It's good in antioxidants, yes, and all that. But when our body goes into detox, our body is in a somewhat of a state of distress. Not like, oh no, what's gonna happen? But a state of getting rid of toxins in the body. So it's taking away from the energy for singing or anything else you'd wanna use that energy for, like singing, and it's moving it towards detoxing the body. So it's not that it's bad for the voice, it's not good for the voice, it's just causing the body to go in a different kind of response that you probably don't want when singing. A plethora of me, can you please do more modern rock music singers that came out in their early 2000s? They're inspired. Yes, as a matter of fact, we just finished a lot of those. They are coming up, thank you for asking. It's not related to this, but since we're here, I'll answer it. Um, I've got the top 10 greatest modern rock alternative singers of all time coming out very soon, probably within the next week or so. And I'm doing uh, reactions slash what makes this singer great on about 20 of them. So stay tuned for that because I do have that coming up. So yes, absolutely, and thank you for asking. Amber from Arizona, hey, we're Arizonians. Uh, I'm working through your course right now and it's fantastic. I already see a difference. Well, thank you, Amber, that's just a comment. All right, cool. Uh, Tim Ridenauer, uh, I would like to buy your course but don't know which level to get. How do I assess that? Well, it's an easy one. I only have one course <laughs> and you can add pro packs to it. So no matter what level you think you are as a singer, no matter what level, I don't care what level you think you are, people don't even get the basic fundamentals of correct breathing, strength in the abdomen, relaxation response, and good vowel placement at the highest levels. So that's the foundation of what I teach. You're gonna want at least the course. I have just the course. If you wanna add the pro packs, and it's like a total like 70 hours of incredible detailed uh, teaching with a lot of different students so you can see how the mechanics works for both male and female, um, that's included for very little more money. So it's obviously a much better buy to get the pro course because you get the course with the pro packs in it. And if you want the gold bundle, it's the pro course and three personal lessons with me. So if you want to be handheld and say, I wanna make sure I'm doing this right, check in with Ken Tamplin, I, I tell you whether you're not, I record it on Skype, I send you a video, and you're able to refer to that to make sure you're doing the course correctly at the gold bundle level. So it's all the same course, you can add pro packs to it, or you can get the pro packs and uh, three hour sessions with me, three one hour sessions. Boston Metal, are cough drops good for singing? Like I said, if they're sugar free and um, they are, um, by the way, just because they're sugar free, they put a lot of bad stuff in place of sugar, so I, that's another tier of talking about diet. But yeah, they're okay to take. Uh, don't rely on them a ton. Um, Mentholated ones are great, and try to do them without sugar in it. Uh, Eleni, yeah, oops, a little too fast for me. Uh, you do say that your singing is using your muscles. Does it also mean that taking care of your other muscles, exercising for general health, uh, also helps you with singing? Absolutely, it absolutely does. Now, I was just on with uh, my associate Bob before we came on here, and I was talking about, speaking of Navy SEALs, I was talking about a, a Navy SEAL that I teach. Uh, just first time I taught, you know, had a lesson with him. And here's a guy that couldn't be more physically fit. So that's awesome, and yes, that helps tremendously with just energy, blood flow, relaxation, you know, just all the mechanics of just how the body works. However, he does a thousand sit-ups every other day. That's part of his, his regimen for his workout routine. And he does a lot of other stuff. Pull, tons of pull-ups and you know, running and you know, biking and all kinds of, and swimming. Anyway, and um, he was not able to understand initially the breath response because he's so used to doing crunches that his whole body tightens up 
and his whole abdomen tightens up and gets all bound up where he's not able to relax and release. So everything to him is on 10 and just, you know, he's going to power through it and man up and just power through it. That's not what we want. So in my course, I'm very specific about how to do the huffing, hey, 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 and how to get to that relaxation response of the abdomen. So get your body strong, but don't do that little exercise. Remember that little, I was talking again to my associate Bob about this too. In the 70s, they used to have this thing that was like a real heavy metal coil, right, a spring, and it had a handle, two handles on it. And it was supposed to be for guitar players it initially was supposed to be for golfers to have hand strength in your swing, but they also had made one for guitar players. And so you'd squeeze this thing over and over and over again to try to get strength in your hands because you want a lot of strength when you play guitar, especially acoustic guitar because the strings are so thick, it requires a lot of strength. But what it would do is, is it would make your arms, forearms look like Popeye and you'd get all this crazy muscle, muscular looking strength in the arms, but it actually froze the ligaments through the arms themselves and completely handicapped and paralyzed the freedom of those ligaments throughout the hand. So while the hand may have been able to grab something and hold onto it, it didn't have the, the freedom and the flexibility and agility uh, to move around and move the strings and, and be flexible. So we found out later that that was an absolute no-no, don't do that. You need something that builds strength and flexibility at the same time. And so we do with our vocal folds in the same context. Good question, thank you for answering it. Brandon. Ken, I'm a perfectionist and I beat myself up about my newly found voice. I train relentlessly, but I don't stop to smell the roses. How do I ease up on myself? Well, it's a lot like anything and I like to liken it unto a good stock on the stock market. You're not gonna put the thing in and expect that sucker tomorrow to go, you know, make you 10 times your money. You're gonna put your money in, you're gonna watch it, you're gonna mess with it, you're gonna play with it or you let the market do what it's gonna do and it incrementally will get better and better. Now here's the thing about singing. It's a little different than guitar. It's a lot different than guitar. Because our voices are a lot more organic than just you know, mechanically playing a bunch of guitar or you know, whatever, whatever other instrument you may or, play, may or may not play, it's a lot more fragile and susceptible to everything from sleep, diet, you know, whatever, right? Colds, flu, etc. You can play guitar on a cold and flu and it's a lot more difficult to play or to sing on a cold and flu. So what we do is, as we give ourselves a certain amount of time, Brandon, and we say, okay, I'm gonna practice for 45 minutes a day, an hour, that's it. I'm not gonna to continue to do this over and over again because just like going to the gym, if we break down muscle structure over and over again and we don't give it a chance to heal and get stronger, all we're doing is tearing down muscle structure. The muscles need to recuperate and rejuvenate. And if you don't give it time to do that, it won't. So in essence, your perfectionist attitude, you know, you're being on 10 and I'm, I'm like that too, um, is actually counterproductive because you're working too hard, the body's working too hard and doesn't have a chance to recuperate. So set some limits on yourself and be responsible with that. Uh, all right, so Ruben, is swimming good for breathing? Yeah, actually it's great. Swimming's awesome. It's, it's really cool because you really do breathe from here. Uh, one interesting thing about swimming is, is a lot of people when they're standing or they're running, they feel this chest expansion like this. When you're swimming, you actually feel the total sum of your torso. So the lungs actually, by the way, your lungs are really deep. They go really, really deep. They don't end here like people think. The lung ca cavity, I mean, it's a big sucker. And so when you're swimming, you're kind of in a, in a mode where you're actually using the total capacity of your lung throughout your entire torso. Now it's not exactly like breathing when you sing, but it's actually a different response than when you run or when you're doing exercise above land. So yes, it's good. Jeffrey Woodson, um, what do you do uh, and what not to do when you have vocal damage? I'll tell you what, um, that's a really great question. I have, spoiler alert, a new CD, not CD, excuse me, a new program coming out called Voice Repair Heal From Home. And it's gonna release pretty soon. So Jeffrey, hang in there because that's gonna come out and it's really cool. And it's gonna really help a lot of people uh, reconstruct and rehabilitate their voices from home uh, without having to you know, spend a zillion dollars on ENTs and, and take a bunch of advice from a bunch of coaches that have never healed their own voices before or probably healed anybody. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start to close here in a minute, guys. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, please put it on your list uh, and do a cover of Heart of Gold by Neil Young. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let, me, let me continue on here. JM, is there a system to trick or, or remember all the lyrics? I'm a great musician, but I need the lyrics in front of me to sing. You know, that's a good question. There really is. Um, I can't cover that here because it's not a tip or a trick. 
but there are memory protocols that I've used in my, in my past. And a lot of it has to do about thinking about the storyline of whatever it is. So um, there are memory courses that cover this. So I recommend getting a good memory course because that will really help you with lyrics. It helped me a lot. And we're gonna, I'll try to do one on, on memorization because that would be, I think, a, a pretty cool uh, thing to do. But yeah, get a good memory course on how to remember people's names, how to remember numbers, how to remember cities and states, geography and whatnot. And you're gonna see that when you're able to do that with different things, not just singing, you'll be able to translate that into uh, remembering lyrics. And by the way, even Mick Jagger to this day still kind of uses teleprompters here and there. So there's a lot of people, you know, Rob Halford from Judas Priest, using, and I know as they get older, they forget stuff or maybe they don't care or just whatever, they're distracted. But you know, people, lots of people still have that issue. Charlotte, uh, Merrell, can't belt. My family thinks I'm nuts, uh, now only in the car. Uh, well, belt in the car. <laughs> I don't know, there's not really a question attached to that. So uh, my family thought I was nuts too. And people when I was driving thought I was nuts on the way to rehearsal as I was singing my brains out. But the last laugh is on them. I'm laughing all the way to the bank. I get to do what I love. And who knows what job they're doing still driving down the 405 freeway in dead stop traffic. All right, Ken, you have the best shirt collection in the entire universe. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm really serious again, I'm thinking about doing this. I buy a lot of shirts. And I do it for fun to have different shirts on, you know, when I have like, I don't know, a couple hundred shirts, right? I am going to do some kind of giveaway where I'm gonna, I'll wash them of course, but I've only worn them once, most of them, one time for a video, most of times twice. And then I just set them aside and I've got this giant stack and I'm not gonna reuse them. So, and they're all, uh, you know, they're, they're XL, so they're, you know, medium or on the large side, but not, lo I'm not a big guy. So, you know, most anyone can wear them. I'm gonna do a, some kind of a, a giveaway, you know, get all of Ken Tamplin's shirts if you answer a certain question or you throw, maybe make a music singing demo or something and you send it in. And then I'll post the winner of the singing demo and then they'll, I'll ship them all my shirts. And they're probably gonna have to be US, uh, uh, Western Europe only because it'd be really tough to ship like that to Asia or, or some other far, real far away place that, you know, South America, cause it's hard to get anything anywhere there. Uh, but anyway, all right, ending, I want to do a shout out again to my notification squad. You guys seriously rock, uh, you know, keep it the good work. If you guys want to keep more videos coming your way, like, and subscribe to my channel, ring that bell. So you'll get notifications and uh, don't forget next Thursday is 10 tips to keep you motivated. So Thursday at 9 a.m. Los Angeles time or Pacific Standard Time. And uh, again, on Saturday, we've got another one. So we're gonna be keeping these things rolling. And if you've got a really good suggestion, I am open, throw it my way, and I'll do my best to get to it. So God bless you, gang. And until next time, peace out.